All right. So, hello, everyone. Um, welcome back to my art class on um, learning to draw. If you know how to draw, then this will probably make you better at drawing. It will make you better at drawing. <laughs> Not just probably. Um, let me just make sure that the microphone levels are good. I think that looks okay. Um, <clears throat> I ordered a microphone. I might try to use... Uh, I have AirPods too. I might try to use that. So yesterday, um, we started off... Um, again, okay, so for those who are new to my stream, my name is Brian McAndrews. Uh, you can refer to me, if you are a student, as Mr. Mick. And um, I am a teacher at Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy. It is a Creative Arts middle school and high school in Camden, New Jersey. Um, <clears throat> I ordered some, this is wax paper, which is really good in my classrooms. We use that, we put that on, um, um, I'm sorry about that. We put that on um, clipboards because uh, it's good for palettes, for paint. Um, it's good, cheap palette paper. Like two bucks, you get, you know, a big roll that'll last you a while. Um, so I teach at Creative Arts, Morgan Village Academy. This is the entryway to our school. And uh, it's a creative arts school. We have all the different arts at our school. We have dance, we have music, we have visual art. Um, I am one of the visual arts teacher teachers there. Uh, Elbright Brown is the other visual arts teacher at my school. Um, also, we have uh, Jeffrey Weismer who does ceramics. Um, so there's really kind of three visual arts sculpture teachers at our school um, and there's jazz teacher instrumental teachers we have strings we have uh, theater we have fashion design um, so just to get that out there in terms of like if you're from the from our area and we're thinking maybe um, you might want to go to creative arts school um, what I'm going to be teaching today and what I've taught the last few times are things that I start off teaching um, no matter where I teach, I, I uh, start teaching these principles because um, I think I know for myself, as I said yesterday, I came across the elements of perspective, uh, the seven elements of perspective, um, the work of Bruce McIntyre when I was trying to really teach myself. And I just want to look at the, the I have my, um, my camera covered because I will spend all my time like looking at the little picture there instead of looking here at you. Um, but I am going to put, uh, just, just so I can um, have, yeah, okay, there you go, I'm good. I'm just checking the live feed on my phone, um, even though there's no chat. There's no chat because this is a, channel that's meant for an art that's meant an art channel that's meant for well when I'm, I'm live public like this I'm teaching these kinds of classes it's k to 12. Um, I think it's appropriate for anybody from k to 12 five or six years old all the way up until you're in um, high school I'm not licensed to teach I'm not a, I don't have my master's in visual art so I don't teach on the college level uh, although I think these principles I learned them when I was in my 20s and late 20s, and I'm late, older than my late 20s now, <laughs> quite a bit older. And when I learned them, I thought, wow, these, this is really, um, these are really important principles. Now, I say I, I learned them from Bruce McIntyre, but really that's not completely true. There's, well, it's somewhat true. Um, there's a guy named Walt Stanchfield, who's, um, I guess, a legend in the animation industry, and he, he um, would teach, well, he was an animator for Disney, and during um, the time of, I believe he worked on, um, is it called The Rescuers? It's like the um, the two mice that go around and they're, they're 
like solving mysteries. I think he worked on that. Um, I'm not the I see if I'm sure there's some animator animation aficionados out there that are like, oh my gosh, he doesn't remember. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember all the stuff that Stanfield worked on. I'm not sure if he worked on like um, Aladdin or not or The Lion King. He might have, um, but he did teach drawing classes at Disney in the evenings and he would teach these life drawing classes and then after class he would often make a page of notes and they would um, include things like you know problems that people are having or maybe some of the nicer drawings from the class and why they are nicer why they're working so well so um, so I, I started, when I was working on trying to teach myself animation, I got these books of Walt Stanchfield, which was his students, or the people that worked with him, took all of his letters and put them together and published them as books. They're two volumes, and they're really, really, really good, um, uh, a good resource for artists to work through. I don't, I don't think it's just for, it's not just for animators, it's for anybody, and there's a lot of life stuff in there. He's... He's someone that was seemed to be very into like self-help and motivation and finding people that would uplift you and motivate you. So he talks about a guy named Famous Amos a lot, I think. And Famous Amos, um, you know, was somebody that like created this cookie company and was a good motivational speaker. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Stanchfield talked often of these elements of perspective. And he talked about Bruce McIntyre. And so then I went looking on the internet for Bruce McIntyre and I found out that I could get his book, which is now on Amazon. Um, I could get his book, you know, I, I could mail away for his book. So I mailed away for his book and this book came in the mail and I started working on the examples. And the examples that we're gonna work on here come right out of that book. And I think the book is a great resource He's got a lot of um, introduction in there that's really good. He's got a written paragraph that goes with each example too, um, which is really well explained. Um, I think it's a great resource for any art teacher. I This is really what inspired me to go back and become a teacher of art, uh, was that I when I started working through these elements of perspective, I thought, man, drawing, because this is what Bruce McIntyre believed, that drawing is something that can be taught just like we teach language and the structures of language doesn't make you a writer, but it makes you someone that knows how to write and to read and you're literate, right? Um, you're literate in the written language or you're literate in English. Um, you can become literate, McIntyre believed, you can become literate in the visual language as well. Sorry if I just messed the microphone up there. Um, so. I was like, man, I, why didn't I, I would have killed to learn this stuff when I was in elementary school or high school, middle school or high school or college. I mean, in, in essence, some of the things we were learning or I was learning on my own or through some teachers, some little bits of things. But this is like a condensed, what are the, what are the principles that you need to learn in order to create a visual space on a flat surface? How, can you, how do you give a flat surface the illusion of three-dimensional space? That, that, uh, those principles are the, are the el seven elements of perspective. And each one in its own way is really important, but when you begin to put them together in drawings, when you're starting to use things like foreshortening and size together, foreshortening overlap and size and surface lines, you start putting these things together and you get really interesting dynamic drawings. We're starting off at the beginning and these early examples, which are just sort of one, maybe two principles in each example. But as we move on, um, and I think what I'll do with this class is kind of like my own class, what I normally do is students come in and we have a warm-up drawing from the beginning of the year in a sketchbook. You're going to be working on that. We might have one or two warm-up drawings uh, per class. And then we move on to the, another project. Um, but we can. I'm going to start off here focusing on these elements. Now this, I believe, is class number three. Class number two, we worked on this, we worked on this, we worked on this. Class number four, here we're going to work on this. We're going to work on this, 
and then we're going to take our drawing from this and do some digital painting with it, I think. Um, but we'll start here. Now I'm going to pull up my drawing um, from yesterday. We wanted to quickly review. Um, and we talked about um, for using foreshortening. If you have your notes from yesterday or your drawings from yesterday, it's a good time to review. Um, you might have drawn this a few times. Yours might have started looking like this, and I might have brought some things to your attention that helped you think about instead of looking at that um, drawing that cake initially is you're looking from a top, you're looking at it as tilted away from you. So it's sort of squished like an oval. Um, so the top of this cake is foreshortened. The other tricky part is as you move down, you have two straight lines here for the sides of the cake. When you get to the bottom of the cake, you want to make sure that that line stays curved, right? You don't want to make it straight. You want to curve it like the top is curved, right? The bottom is foreshortened just like the top is. Um, and then I put some little designs on there. Uh, I kept those designs also curved just like the top, right? If you make those lines straight, it's going to flatten out the, the shape and something's going to be a little bit weird, right? Um, then we looked at <clears throat> a, a foreshortened square. Um, McIntyre has this really cool way of doing it, which is this division sign. And uh, you want to be careful that these points from your division sign, when you're building your foreshortened square, aren't too far out away. You want to keep them fairly close. And it'll create this foreshortened square shape. If it's they're too far out, it's going to look like you're looking at that, that box directly from above, kind of like the same problem you have with the cake. So if you're having that problem, not a big deal. Lots of people have that problem. Almost everybody has that problem in the beginning. What what's the solution to that problem? Make bring those if the your division design, bring those points in a little bit, foreshorten it more, and try again. Right? So you start your your one drawing, it's not that good. Just start another drawing below it. Start another drawing below it. If you need to make a whole page of TVs to get one that you think is right or the one that you're you're happy with, that's okay, right? There's, this is not one and done. This is the sketchbook of the artist or just the piece of paper you might have while you were following along. Keep those together in a folder. I don't want you, you know, losing them or, or I want you to keep them as a record of your work. But um, it's, you know, there's, this is for yourself. Um, this is, you're learning a skill, you're learning a language and you're learning how to speak that language and you're learning how to practice that language and no one learns a language the first time perfectly. Everyone's practiced and those that practice more um, learn to speak the language better than others. And if you want to learn the language, just commit to putting that time in and enjoying that time. Um, you'll probably find that when you work on drawings, um, and really just concentrate on it or redrawing things or you get into something where you put all these things together and you end up drawing a scene or a landscape or a person or a character that you really like, you're going to find yourself concentrating and um, <clears throat> finding a kind of state of mind. I find that there's a state of mind that I get into when I'm drawing and I'm making art that's kind of different than anything else. Um, and I'm sure for actors and for musicians, um, and for other types of art, there's a similar type of a place that you can get into, a mental place, a really mental creative place where you feel, um, you don't feel stressed, you don't feel, um, you might feel unhappy that it's not quite the way you want it to be, but you want to keep working on it to make it the, make it the drawing you want or make it the piece of art that you want. Um, so it's part of that process, so enjoy it. Uh, okay, so file, and we have new. And I'm going to save, I'm going to save this, yes. Now, um, I have here, um, I think I made a, did I make a folder? No, I didn't. Um, I'm just going to YouTube class. Okay, actually, let me save there. Um, I have here my email, brian.mcandrews at gmail. 
if you're over 13, you could send me an email saying, I want to sign up for your Google Classroom. I made a Google Classroom for us. I haven't really put much in it, to be honest, yet, because I don't have anyone signed up yet. I'm, this is still early going, I know. Um, <clears throat> oh, I put the link to the... <laughs> for some reason, I put the link. This is... <laughs> that's from my earlier... Um, that's from my earlier uh, class for my, my creative arts students. So I teach my creative arts students until 1 o'clock every day. Um, I, I do these live streams for them. Um, so what we can have here is if people join, we'll have a class together. Um, we'll share our classwork, our drawings. I'll post up um, the drawings that we do in class. I'll post up things about the elements of perspective and maybe other things that we make. I, I often make uh, YouTube videos for my students to follow along with. I could do that where you follow along with um, the videos at your own pace. Um, and then share out the artwork and we can have a class discussion about it and critique and give each other feedback. I can give out some art homework, some some you know things I might want you to go out and look around you know, your house or maybe out in your backyard and find an animal to sketch and draw. So um, <clears throat> there's all kinds of interesting things that we can do um, using Google Classroom. So big shout out to Google for making YouTube, for making Google Classroom, those things um, are going to be really useful tools as we spend however long this is going to be um, in this setting that we're all kind of figuring out how to to navigate. Um, I feel very lucky that I and I'm a teacher, an art teacher, um, I can continue to do that from home. Um, I know a lot of people are not in that situation. Um, for example, uh, Maria, my fiance, um, my fiance, she needs to apply for unemployment because her employer can't afford to keep paying them because they're not open. Um, we're supposed to get married in August, so uh, or we are going to get married in August. Um, I don't know that that will affect us, but it potentially could. And I know if I was in a similar situation of being laid off, we're both laid off. We have a house that we have to pay the mortgage on and car payments and dogs and all kinds of stuff. And everyone's in this kind of strange boat. And I know this is just an art class, but it's going all over the place. But I, I just, um, you know, feel like we got to talk about the things that are going on and the complications that come along. But there's also an other side. There's always two sides to everything. The other side is I started making these art classes because um, I wanted to help out people who are at home, students who are at home that want, the, want an art class that might not have one or might not have one now because it's online and their teacher, maybe their teacher doesn't have the resources to get online like this or make these kinds of things. Um, maybe they don't really have an art class before this, so they would like to have an art class, but it's not offered at their school. Um, any, or maybe there's parents that see a, their child has some artistic ability and where do you start? Well, these, these elements of perspective in these drawing lessons are good places to start. I've talked for a long time, I know. Um, <clears throat> but my point with this is this time there's a big, obviously negative side to it, but there's also positives in that you're watching this video and maybe you're signing up for my class, maybe you're working on drawing, and we've connected in a way that maybe we definitely wouldn't have otherwise. So um, it's important to not discount the positives in life. It's easy to get caught up in the negatives, and some of these negatives are serious and deserve to be focused on because they're important. It's important to wash your hands. It's important to social, social distance. It's important to be conscious of you know, what you're coming in contact with and the situations you're going to be in, because they are risky right now. But it's also important to know and notice, well, now you're spending more time with your family. Um, now you're getting to know your neighbors better over the fence. Um, now you're, you know, starting to just hang out in a park or around your house and noticing the transition to spring um, that you might be too caught up and too busy to notice, right? So it's not all one way. It's 
it's both and um that's my water heater i'm sorry so with that all being said um i don't think i'll have to say that every time maybe i'm going to clip this and make it my youtube intro video let's move on to a example of drawing So here we have, it's kind of related to what we worked on yesterday. Let's see if this will come back to life. Okay, it did not. Boom. Okay. Oh, no. Yes? No. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So my, I think my, um, my little drawing tablet here, I thought I could use it wirelessly, but, uh, you know, when it happens when you don't, plug in the wireless charger, it's died. It died. I think it died. So I'm just going to plug myself in here. Um, okay, I, I think I saw it move. So we're going to, so how do we start this? We're going to start with a, our division sign again. Our straight line, our division sign. And you want to make sure that this this line here is relatively in the middle there, okay? Um, and also that these two points don't get too far away. Because if they get too far away, it'll look like you're, you're, um, you're not viewing the table as tipped at an angle. You're viewing that table as looking directly above. Um, that's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of my drawing right now, but it's okay. Now, when you make the bottom part of this table, now I made this part a little too long relative to this. The important thing is as you're drawing it, check, say the angle here, make it parallel to the, ang to the other angles, right? Parallel line or two lines that move in on it's the only works I believe on the flat 2D surface, but there are two lines that move off in space on this flat surface and they'll never intersect. So we have these lines, these all relate to each other, this relates to that, and relates to that, and then we have that going the other way. This, this, and then this. I find it really tricky to draw this other, these other side. And then look at the angles here. Um, parallel again. Now, let's make the um, the base. Now you could do something where you sketch in a light line here, and you just make sure that this line and this line are the same length. And then this bottom line, notice how the bottom line comes down lower. I think that's a point that Mac, uh, McIntyre makes very often. Um, I've tapered, it looks like I've tapered the sides a little bit. By tapering is means instead of being completely parallel, I've tapered them in a little bit. Um, that's okay. This is uh, not a drawing that's meant for, you know, an architectural drawing to build a house. This is, this is just a nice little sketch that I've made. Now, um, looking at the example, the original example, and my example, I did something wrong. Wrong or maybe it's not wrong, it's just different. But I made the tabletop a little too small. So what I could do is just extend out these sides a little bit this way and this way. And then this way, and then that way. Again, uh, parallel, 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 right? Same with the other side. Then I'm going to take my eraser and just lightly erase it. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm a little bit sleepy. Um, I didn't get a ton of sleep last night. I just woke up and I couldn't go back to sleep. At like 3 a.m. I don't know why. Okay, so... Yes, I just lighten. I didn't erase away all of my earlier mistakes because 
We don't have to be totally erased. Sometimes it's good to keep a record of where you messed up so you know what, where not to mess up again, whatever the case might be. Uh, you might want to just make it totally clean. That's fine too, right? So there is our table. Now here, I said put something on the table. Smiley face. So you maybe want to draw something on your table. I'll draw something on mine. What could I draw on the table? Well, I'm drinking a can of soda here. Well, it's not soda exactly. It's sparkling water. Mm. My um, Maria, my Maria, <laughs> she goes to Aldi a lot. She likes Aldi. And these are Aldi um, soda. What, what do you say we put a flower pot in a flower? That's our vase. So I'm just going to make a simple, simple vase using a foreshortened circle there. You could put whatever you want on your table. Um, I'm just imagining a little flower growing out. That is a little bit of a shadow. I feel like my everything that I've drawn is a little tipped that way. That's okay. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm still um, getting the hang of this way of drawing using this tablet. But uh, I should have said this to begin with. I would um, encourage you to just be using pencil and paper. That's really all you need um, for these initial classes. Although I'm going to take one of the pencil and paper drawings at the end here and um, do a digital painting from it, uh, which we're going to use an app on our phones, a free app that you can get on your phone. So there's example number one, and I, I could come along and, and if you want to take this example a little further, you could come along and, and put some shading lines on there. McIntyre doesn't have that in the beginning. You know, that's something he does introduce. Um, and I might even, I'm blending that. And the way that you might blend in real life is you just take a piece of tissue paper, toilet paper even, you could take a, a um, uh, Q-tip, that's fine. And sometimes it's nice to go back and forth between a kind of blended look and a drawn look, you know, um, sometimes the blending stuff can get too, a little too um, soft. Uh, and it's nice to bring in some of the drawing again, some of that detail. So I like a mix, but that's just me. So you know, I think there's uh, something to be said for either way. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna move over a little bit here. I, I think it's a good idea to do a number of these examples on the same page or for example if you had a tough time with that table and you want to redraw it keep redrawing it on the same page um, but if you've just drawn one or two you're like okay and that's you know you have all that space around it why not draw another one of the, a couple of these examples around here uh, okay so here oh and I didn't play the animation I'm sorry the last one I didn't play the animation and uh, the uh, so um, these are live videos, just like I would be giving a kind of a live class. Um, I'm not editing them. I'm not jump cutting or anything. Um, so if I mess up, you're you know you're gonna see me warts and all. Uh, okay, so how does this begin? Kind of like the cake from yesterday. We have that foreshortened circle, and we're not looking at the hat from the top. It's tipped like that. So we're seeing a kind of oval shape um, that's more like this, right? And there's an other smaller one inside of that. And that smaller one becomes, you can think about it, what it becomes, but it becomes the base of the pointy part of the witch's hat. This example would be kind of cool for um, Halloween. 
I okay there you go that turned out okay you see how I'm sort of slowly building up through light lines I'm kind of I get the overall shape kind of right and then as I get closer to what I think is the right thing I start with a little bit of a heavier line I think that's a good way to approach it just start with lighter lines part of the reason I'm doing that is because I'm not that familiar with ooh, ooh, what did I just do um, I, I'm not as familiar with this drawing tool. I'm drawing here, but what I'm drawing down here is showing up there. Um, I like this tool a lot, uh, but I'm just getting used to it. You know, I have an iPad I can draw on and stuff too, but I like this because I kind of see what you see in terms of, uh, you know, you see the... Um, the stylus tip, just like as if this was the pencil tip and you see the exact um, pathway. So we need to draw in the face here. Um, the main point of this example is the series of foreshortened circles, but you know, we can keep adding to that. We could, um, we could Draw some hair. Um, you could even just just draw hair like this coming up. We could make a her nose. Maybe she's she's smiling. I did something strange with the hair. <laughs> um, she's happy. And then uh, I, I also, in this example here, had her um, holding like a crystal ball. So I'll just simplify her hand and think about her hand kind of like a, like a mitten, right? Like all the fingers are held together, the thumbs out here, or just like a mitten. And then over on this side, um, we kind of have the mitten being closed and the, the thumb there. And then she's got her, her magic wand, right? simple little and then we have details that we can add in here i'm going to zoom in right so you might you can zoom in you might get a little bit closer and work a little bit more detailed um and i didn't i didn't uh, play oh, play this animation let me do that let me take this and move it over just so it's easier to see all right animation come on work with me all right now we have our details and these details act as a kind of a texture these stars and moons and stuff. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, fire, or rain? Extra credit points if you know what that's from. So these, this cool texture pattern or texture of, it's not really a pattern so much as it's just something going on on the surface there that gives it a little bit of a more visual interest. All right, so hopefully you're following along. Maybe you're following along on paper and pencil. And if you are, then this next part of the lesson is for you. When the hurly belly's done, when the battle's lost and won, that will be ere the set of sun. I believe that's how it goes. I'm just putting some shadow from the, the hat kind of on her face a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what I did with the hair there. It's kind of bugging me. Um, maybe I'll give her a little bit of a chin. And she's, she's smiling. She knows something. When the battle's lost and won, that shall be ere the set of sun. Um, that is our witch. I kind of like this version that I made better than this version that I made. Maybe I'll save it and put it in that example. Um, but what I want to do now, um, so we've drawn a few examples, and they, fo they focused primarily, if not exclusively, almost, 
Well, also, I mean, this used, if you can guess which element of perspective you see being used here. Um, you could pause it and maybe go back and look at this and then unpause it. Um, foreshortening, right? And we're dealing with a foreshortened square here. We're making sure that these bottoms stay uh, this in the same perspective and then the bottom of the table as well. Um, in this example, I was nearly going to say this is just foreshortening too, because foreshortened circle, foreshortened circle, but you are getting some overlap here with the back of the hat going around the back like this. Like you can imagine the back being there. That's part of the reason we start with these two drawings, right? We draw them lightly, and then you can see just I'm not erasing necessarily erasing that. I'm just making these other lines heavier, and it pulls this whole thing forward. This line is overlapping that. You'll see a lot of people describing overlap as that is kind of the symbol of overlap. Symbol of overlap. Like, check out the overlap. Overlap ahead. <laughs> like stop sign or turn sign. <laughs> All right. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to take your drawing that you've done on pencil and paper, or if you've done it digitally, then you can just follow along digitally. But I'm gonna assume that you've worked on pencil and paper, and I am going to bring that pencil and paper drawing onto my phone, and I am going to scan it in, and I'm gonna digitally paint it. So we're gonna take our witch, and we're gonna add some color, we're gonna add some shading, we're gonna zhuzh it up um, for my Netflix fans out there. So, how are we going to do that? Um, good question. Um, it says it's 100% full, that battery for the tablet. Okay, so I am going to grab my phone, which I should... Sorry. It's right here. Never fear, it's right here. Um, I'm going to grab the cord. I'm going to use this Android phone. Um, you might have heard me mention, I, I was thinking about doing a lesson, and I still might do it, where we take the oldest phone, oldest devices that we can find. It's an older Android phone. And I'm going to use this app called Pfizer uh, to um, stream from my phone to all of you. And let's see. Mm, please be patient with me. I appreciate it. Um, let me do this again. Let me just go to the app. Next. Oh, no, I don't need that. <laughs> um, so if you do not have it yet, now would be a great time to, yeah, I don't know if the problem is this cable. I think there might be a different, oh, that's what the problem is. See, sometimes some, Android cables only work for um, charging. And sometimes they work for whatever you want. Okay. 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 Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. One more time. I should have tried this beforehand. What am I going to do? Teacher on the spot. Let me do this. We will go a different route. We will go the iPhone route. Um, and let me. Well, first, connect to my Wi Fi network. So, if you have your drawing and if you want to grab your phone, um, so you can follow along at home. Okay. Boom. You're going to get to see my dogs. 
Those are my two Pomeranians. I say mine, but um, Maria, my fiance, uh, she's like number one <laughs> to them. So if you were to ask them, uh, who, who, you know, who would you rather hang out with? They would say her, and that's fair. I'd rather hang out with her too. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hit plus, and. Uh, so we're using an app called Autodesk Sketchbook. It's a free app. We're going to hit, and I've the first class that I did, I talked about this whole process. So if this is somewhat confusing, feel free to hit pause, go to that other video, watch the other video. It's um, where I talk about how to do this, and then come on back. Um, but you're going to, oh, 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 I got ahead of myself. I'm going to hit plus and scan sketch. And then I have a little sketch here of the of, of a witch. Oh wow, look at it. It's trying to make that into a triangle. Oh, it almost did. Let's go this way with it. We're gonna help the app out. I think the light here might not be great. I don't know if you hear my dogs barking. So normally, all right, and that's not too bad. Um, it's It did a better job here. Uh, I don't know what it looks like on your screen, but it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna hit done. And the beautiful thing about um, Sketchbook is it took that drawing that I just made, or not just made, I made this before the class. I, I kind of like the one on the screen here better, but um, just so when you're following along, you can see. Um, so what I did, what I did was I had that sketch prepared. And I'll just hide all my busy icons. Um, so, so now I have these layers. I'm going to hold on that one layer and drag it underneath. And now, well, actually, let me do this too. I'm going to tap on the background. So that's this right here. I'm going to keep this here. Um, well, I'll keep that there. I'm going to tap on this right here. For the background, and I'm going to make it a bit of a gray. My chapstick fell over. Um, and okay, so now you can see the drawings on top, and I've got this gray background. And I like to work on um, a toned surface, a surface that has some color, whether it be gray, some value, whether it be gray or some color, like a, a brown or a blue, a warm or a cool, something in the background to start from. I like that, um, rather than just a, the white canvas. So now I have my drawing layer here. I oftentimes will uh, label that layer like gray. And then I'm going to go to that layer underneath, and this is going to be the layer that I paint with. Um, because what's happened is Autodesk scanned in my sketch and it took that, that drawing I made and brought it in as a drawing, as if I had drawn it in the program. So I don't need to redraw it in the program. Now, what colors should we pick for our witch? Well, first thing, let's get a paintbrush. I, um, I'm sorry, check my watch. I should have put this on theater mode. And that way I don't get bothered by it. Uh, I, I um, apologize for that. Uh, I am going to use this. I love these legacy brushes, this legacy paintbrush. I'm going to go with a purple. Look at that bright purple there. That's nice. I'm going to make my brush a little wider. So if I use this puck and I drag it to the right, it's going to let me make my brush bigger. I want it to be much bigger. And I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit here. So that, that changes how heavy the paint is applied. So in this way, I can kind of keep adding layers and make it kind of darker. Uh, I like doing that. Um, OK, and then I'm going to come in here. And I'm not worried about going outside the lines because See the drawing stays on top. I'm not worried about covering the drawing either. Eh. Okay. 
Okay, I made by making the opacity lower. When I when I lift my finger up and I add more paint, um, it's going to make it a bit darker, right? I don't really like that, but there's a way to solve that problem. If I grab go back to my library of paint brushes, which is at the very top up here, um, and I pick the smudge pen, I'm going to come along here, and I'm just going to blend. Oh, see that that pen is super thin. I'm going to make that pen, I'm going to drag it to the right and make it bigger. The other way to make it bigger is I tap on the button at the top and I go to settings and I can just make it much bigger, just a lot easier. I, I don't know why I haven't been doing that. Okay, how big is it? Okay, it's big enough. And I'm going to blend it. See what's happening there? Using that smudge pen, I'm getting rid of those lines and I'm making a kind of a really, it makes a really cool gradient. Um, so, did you hear that? <laughs> I think it was someone opening the gate. I think it was Maria opening the gate because she's out back doing all kinds of stuff like with the leaves. She's like burning sticks and stuff. And I think she just opened the gate. But to me, it sounded like somebody was just behind me. <laughs> you didn't see me get scared, did you? Okay, so now I'm just going to blend. I'm using this smudge tool to blend all of those lines that I made. And it, in, it ends up kind of making this look like it's shaded, because it is shaded. Not, not to give the weather forecast, but I'm throwing some shade. I mean, I'm throwing some shade on it. I'm not throwing shade at it. OK. <laughs> See, this is the kind of humor that my students just love. My students love my sense of humor. They think I am so funny. No, they don't, actually. They think my jokes are pretty bad. But I tell my students, every morning for breakfast, I have cornflakes. Two bowls, so I'm extra corny. OK, so we're going to go to our library, and we're going to use our eraser. And I'm going to use my eraser just to um, clean up that edge. I don't like that eraser. I'm going to use this eraser. <laughs> I love the legacy tools. I do. The legacy tools are kind of like almost the only tools that I need. Occasionally I'll use some of the texture tools and stuff in Sketchbook, but these legacy tools, that pencil brush, that paint brush, that airbrush, those two erasers are my go-to. Um, so I'm going to go to the eraser now, the heavy eraser. I'm going to make it, uh, it's probably not too bad terms of size and I'm going to come along and just clean up my drawing if I had done a better job with maybe with a smaller brush now this might seem and again I'm doing all this this is just finger painting this might seem tedious to some You're like I oh I went over the line um, It's cool though. Look at that. It might be it might seem tedious, but it's not. It's part of the process of art making. And if you can get the hang of this process, transitioning to sketchbook, to Photoshop, it's all, you know, there's these are all related. Although I will be honest with you, I I don't want to say I don't get Photoshop. I just um, I like Sketchbook a lot. Now I wasn't very clear with my lines there, so I could choose which line to go. I'm gonna go with this line. So we're working in color, we're working in digital paint. There's no cleanup. That's where the Susan, uh, I think her name's Murtog. She's an artist uh, that was on Flickr when the um, iPhone became a very big tool for doing digital painting, or began to be a tool for digital painting. And you had a, I forget the name of the artist, but he, he painted the cover of New York Times on his iPhone. And everyone was like, what? On an iPhone? 
Um, and it was really cool. Um, it was really inspiring. It was inspiring to me. Uh, she, um, Susan talked about, you know, she, she was a, a fine artist and, and painter. And then she got really into iPhone and then iPad painting. You can see her stuff on Flickr. Um, she's like the best part, you know, there's no cleanup. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay. So I've painted now. What do I do with the, um, what do I do with the shapes on the hat? Um, I could go with gold. I think gold would be cool. This kind of reminds me a little bit. There's a new video game that came out. I forget the name of it. It's a girl, a young girl with a cool hat. I think different hats give her different powers. This kind of reminds me of that game a little bit. Um, or maybe, you know, this could be a game design or character design. Crayon raspberry. Not bad. I mean, there's no calories. There's no caffeine. Um, that's good. Because <laughs> I will drink too much of both. Uh, let me make a new layer on top all right and it, what look what happens when i turn off that drawing layer and i get the hat by itself look at that that's so cool and this is just a simple little example <laughs> but to me this is just cool excuse me i drink the seltzer and then i belch on camera oh my gosh i apologize but um i could work a darker shadow in here um and but you know the line work sort of solves some of that uh, maybe it's getting too much into the details to um to get caught up in the the color of this just yet maybe i'll i'll move on to the hair and then the face but let me uh put a vocab word in here um texture I think it's really important. Um, I was telling my students earlier when we were working on some painting uh, that I was prepping a, a, the background of a painting and um, the other art teacher at my school, Albright Brown, he does this really interesting um, uh, paper collage art with his students and he paint has the students paint the paper and then cut it out. So the actual, figures in the in the piece are very simple but the, there's so much texture on the on the clothing and all the stuff in the background that even though the drawing itself you'd say the drawing is very simple the texture is so uh so rich that it it's beautiful <laughs> it's beautiful stuff um and he's uh no i don't want to get it you could look up him online but he's a um he's an illustrator and uh He's won some awards for his illustrations. So, um, I want the hat to be on top of the hair. So I'm gonna move this layer underneath because the hat is on top of the hair and the hair is gonna be top of the face. So I wanna sort of order the layers by what's gonna be on top of what, right? Um, and then hair will go on top of the shirt, right? So. If we think about things that way, we want the hair layer to be underneath the hat layer. Uh, hair next, let's say what color hair. Now, if we try to do some things based on the color wheel here, um, we could say, well, going opposite this purple on the color wheel gets us into this yellow green area. So I kind of like the idea and that when you find a color on the other side of the color wheel, uh, it's called the complement to that color, right? So here we have a blue across this orange. Um, we have the, the purple across is the yellow, right? We have the, the red and the green, which everyone thinks of as Christmas colors, but also they are complementary colors relative to each other. Uh, so if I, this purple that we have here, and I should probably do this. If I go to this button there, I can save that purple. And it's probably a good idea to do that because I might need it again. Um, but I'm going to go across and instead of being more yellow, I'm going to push it a little bit more green than yellow. And I'm going to paint her hair green like Billie Eilish. 
um, so we'll paint our hair green. Now, notice how when I paint underneath that hat, because I'm not, I didn't paint with opaque colors. You can see the hair underneath, and um, some people might say, "Well, you should, you know, use fully opaque colors." And I can just come along with my eraser and clean that up. Um, and also, if I go here. I'm going to mess around a little bit with shadows right now. So if I go here and I take this and I drag it up or down, and I drag it down, I can change the value of that color and add some black to it. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come along and boom, I'm going to add some black in there and I might even add some here and here just to give the feel of the shadows, right? Now it kind of looks weird. It's kind of like a marker. It's almost like a marker, right? When you overlap a marker, uh, you can see how one um, marker stroke overlaps another stroke. Right? It doesn't blend as evenly as, say, watercolor or paint. But if I take, again, I go back to my trusty smudge pen, and I just begin to blend in here. I begin to pull, and, and my pen, the, the size is at 50, and my flow is low. My flow is at 3%. Right? The more flow you give, the more it's going to pull that color. Right, so I'm keeping the flow really low. Right, my throat, my flow is on three percent. I'm keeping two percent. I'm gonna undo that. I'm just gonna come along, and with my low flow pen, I'm gonna just even out those um, shadows and things. Okay. I checked my watch again. I'm sorry. Right? So you got a lot of hair going on here. <laughs> um, I'm going to take my eraser. I'm going to use this eraser and I'm going to come in and because I'm on another layer relative to the hat, right? I can, I don't have to worry about erasing the hat. So I can erase all over this. I'm not going to erase that hat at all. Really simple. But look at that. That's cool, isn't it? And come along here and erase this. That's just because I'm not using uh, fully opaque colors. We can see a little bit of that underneath. I'm just going to erase it there. And I'm spinning the canvas around because you can do it with spinning the phone around or whatever. But, you, you know, I, I tend to spin my paper around when I work on art. I don't just keep it like this and move my arm around. I'll move the paper around. Um, and I'm doing that same thing here. So, um... I would love if some people could email me. You don't have to join my Google Classroom if you don't want to join my Google Classroom. If you email me, um, if you email me, brian.mcandrews at gmail, any of your artwork that you make while following along with my video, uh, maybe I'll show some of your artwork during my class time. Or if you email me and ask for a Google Classroom, you can join a class where you can get feedback directly from me or from some of the other students. But um, I will be totally honest. I find this to be a lot of fun. And you'll be like, well, Mr. Mick, haven't you drawn this example 500 million times? And I'm like, yes, I have drawn this example 500 million times, but I've never done it with this kind of cool digital painting with purple hat and green hair. Um, and even if I was just drawing it, I probably would have a lot of fun. To me, this is so much fun. Boom, boom, boom. 
boom, boom, boom. I'm getting Billie Eilish's songs in my head now. And you're like, Mr. Mick, that sounds nothing like Billie Eilish. <laughs> and I'm like, Pff. Pff. to me, it sounds just like Billie Eilish. Um, and I could probably play around. Like I'm like, Ooh, I really want to play around with the shadows and stuff in that hair. I do. Like, for example, <clears throat> if I go back to the paintbrush, or, no, actually, if we go to the airbrush, and we grab a darker, even darker, right? I have no idea how big the airbrush is right now, but oh, that's way too big. We're gonna get the feel of that flap it. That's maybe too much of a shadow. <laughs> I went too far. I was like, look at this cool thing I'm gonna do, and then I didn't do that cool of a thing. Um, yeah. Now I realize that so many people are probably gonna call me out and say, nobody has hair like that. Nobody. <laughs> and I'm gonna say, okay, let me, uh, how about now? <laughs> Hairs like that. Like, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. And I'm just messing around with the, um, the, the um, uh, airbrush now. Pushing the shadows on the sides a little bit back. I mean, just with with your finger and a phone, um, this stuff, this stuff is so cool. I think. I'm the bad guy. <laughs> you look at my singing. I might get hit for the YouTube copyright infringement with with my good singing. <laughs> All right. Um. Now, what if? Oh, look at that. That is so cool. I think it's so cool. I'm not just really like, I'm so proud of me. I'm just saying, like, this is just a simple example. But you can, uh, what elements of perspective are we using here? We're using, um, we're using foreshortening, for sure. We're using foreshortening. Uh, we're using some shading or some value, another way to say the same thing. We're using shading. Um, we're using, you can you can guess, say it out loud, uh, pause it and then unpause it, overlap, right? This is overlapping that. I uh, even get some overlap going on back here, right? With one thing of hair going back. Um, you could argue some surface where the front of the hat's kind of lower relative to the back. Um, maybe some, eh, not really surface lines so much. Um, so really, I would say the big ones are foreshortening, shading, and overlap. But you put those three things together and you can do so much. Um, just with value and shading, you can do a lot. Um, okay, so... Uh, skin. I'm, I'm going to spend... I might go over here. There's no, you know... The, the YouTube goes on forever, so I it ends what I say. <laughs> I'll, I'll end the stream in a minute. I just want to get the face on. So, um, what color for the skin? This is tricky. Well, green, purple hat. And I should have saved that green. I am going to save that green. Save that green. That's the green of the hair, basically. Um, because all of the value. So I've changed the value, but this is the this is the hue, right? The hue is the color, and then all the lights and darks are the different values of that hue. Um, hue, aka color. Oh, that's a good good vocab word. Look at us coming up with vocab words. Hue. And I'm just going to put, I'm not going to define this one, a.k.a. color. 
texture is pretty obvious. Foreshortening is, you know, how things look as they're tipped in space, three-dimensional space. Perspective is what most people think of when they think of foreshortening, but is how do you create the illusion of three-dimensional space on a flat surface. And value is another name for shading. We'll put AKA. AKA shade. As I say to my students, put some shade on it before I throw some shade at it. Um, skin color. What if we made her blue? Now I know her hair is green. What if we made her blue? This blue here. Oh, okay, I started. I'm gonna go back to that paintbrush tool, not the airbrush tool. I'm the bad guy. <laughs> you like my renditions? Uh, this is what you get when you get me for an art teacher. She's blue. She's kind of like. An avatar witch, and I've never seen Avatar. Can you believe it? And I might go out here and just boop 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 boop, give some blue to the hands. Boop 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 boop. Um, and I'm going to throw some shade on it. Didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna go here and pull the value a little darker. Go. Boom. Oh, that was way too thick. Shading under the nose, here, 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 and then I'm going to lighten the opacity a little bit and put some here and here and there. That's all kinds of messy looking, but the trick that we're going to use the smudge pen, smooge, smooge it up, and Probably have to fix that shadow. And part of it is I'm just going to soften up that shadow there. I'm going to take the eraser tool. I'm going to come in. Boom, 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 boom. I hope I didn't lose any students by seeing Billie Eilish so poorly. <laughs> I'm not trying to make fun. I do I do appreciate Billie Eilish, um, her music, but uh, I'm really bad. I always make my own lyrics up to songs. I get in so much trouble at home. I get corrected all the time. And I might go the other way here with her nose and find some highlights. There she is. <laughs> I'm trying to make her happy initially. Um, I think I might go back in and draw her happy a little bit. Maybe put a little bit of a happy smile. Because I feel like she's She's not very happy at the moment. Turn that frown upside down. She's happy, right? She's, she's a happy, happy avatar witch. There we go. A little bit of runny nose. Um, our little avatar witch. But it started off with us working on these elements of perspective. And um, then we just brought one of our drawings into our phone. And this would have worked for Android as well as iPhone. Um, and then we just used the scan sketch tool. And we began to experiment with some color and some layers and some blending of colors and some value. Um, so I want to say thank you to anyone and everyone who checked out this class. You heard it again. I've noticed I've had some views. If you could like and subscribe, 
that way and click the notification bell that way you could get a notification when I make a new put a new class up I am trying to make at least Monday through Friday with a potential Saturday or Sunday class too but at least Monday through Friday 1 30 to 2 30 an art class um, which will look at drawing principles those are my dogs principles of drawing we'll do some drawing on pencil and paper we'll do some digital art um, I, if you want to email me any of your artwork for some feedback, or if you want to join one of my Google Classrooms, uh, my email is brian.mcandrews at gmail.com. So, thank you. I am Mr. Mick, and I appreciate you stopping by. Now, how do I end the stream? Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to end this. I think I end the stream right here. Okay. There we go. All right, I'll see ya.